gamers? I'm Jason. And I'm Julie. And today on Dice and Dragons, we are going to be reviewing God of War, the card game. Now this is published by Simon Games in conjunction with PlayStation. That's right, it's an officially licensed PlayStation product based on God of War 4 for the PS4. Now the game is designed by Alex Olteanu and Fel Barros. Really hope they pronounced them right. Those sound like Greek names. I think so. I have no idea. <laughs> well, if you guys do watch the video, please feel free to let me know how to properly pronounce your names. With that being said, Julie's now going to tell you more about the game itself. So it's a cooperative card game that is intended for one to four people, ages 14 and above. And uh, the box says it plays in 90 minutes, but I, I would say 60 to 90. Yeah, I think that's because we played at like uh, two players. But even when we played at four players... Yeah, but we're also two people, not four people. So I do think that with higher player counts, you're going to get closer to that 90 minute mark. But it does play a little bit under that. But it could also depend on the scenarios that you play. Could be. So with that being said, let's talk a little bit about God of War, the card game. Now, this game does its best to replicate the scenarios and quests from the video game. What you're going to have is a tableau of cards that'll be dealt in front of you. There will be enemies on the cards, and this is going to be your quest. Now, each quest has its own victory condition. You must meet those victory conditions, as well as avoiding the loss conditions, which could be your death by being knocked down, or potentially having something happen like running out of uh, fire to keep you warm in an ice stage. So keep that in mind. You will progress through two quests and then arrive at a final boss, or four of them in the game, and if you defeat the boss, you will have saved the day and stopped Ragnarok. At least I think that's what the point of this game is. I've only played the first series. I haven't played uh, the fourth one, so fortunately, but uh, I don't know. This game is kind of getting me interested in trying it out. Now, with that being said, Julie, what time is it? It's time to grab our drinks. It's not our drinks. What do Vikings call it? Mead ale? We'll have to grab our ale. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Grab our best friend. We gotta take it to the table. And take it to the table. Should be interesting. We've had this one for a while. It's even sleeved already because I thought we would have played it and uh, yeah, got a little bit ahead of myself there. Now we'll see. Now we're gonna take a quick look at the components for God of War, the card game. We'll start with the rule book. Now, as we always do, we'll take a look at the back. Now, we do have a nice summary, the preparation phase, the activation phase, what you can do in that, the extra scene activation phase. Don't worry, we'll talk about all that when we get to the how to play. Then you've got the overview of the upgrade phase and how you can win and lose the game. And this nice handy dandy reference with all of the icons. Now, overall, the rule book is put together fairly well. I don't have too many complaints. Uh, my main complaints come with regards to uh, some of the scenarios that we'll talk about in our review. And it would have been very helpful to have a section in the rule book that is about each specific scenario that we get or quest that you'll be going on. But one thing I do like and I want to highlight is there is a solo mode and you can get all the details as to how to play the game solo from page 13 going on. So there you have it. That is the rule book. Let's take a look at the rest of the components. So we do have a total of five characters in the game. We have, of course, Kratos. Now, for those of you that may not know God of War 4, the game is based on God of War 4. And you've got an image from the video game. All the content is stills from the video game. His ability is Spartan Rage. We have a Rage track here that will move up as you attack. So you get to add plus three to your next attack and heal three damage. Freya, whose ability is Old Magic, you may place a Freya token, this token here, to defend from all incoming damage. Atreus, who can deal two damage up to two enemies and can't be blocked. We have Mimir, who we've yet to play as. Uh, you, can, you can choose a hero to attach yourself to at the beginning of each round, becomes your carrier. You can choose to block for that hero instead. Mimir does not have a turn, but you must draw an upgrade card for him. So. I haven't looked too much into how he works, but definitely plays different than everyone else. And his special ability is during the scene activation, you get to draw an extra upgrade card and choose one of them and place the other in the bottom of the upgrade deck. So you get to activate it right away, which is pretty cool. We have 
Brock and Sindri. So we have two characters actually. They each have their own rage track and own special abilities, plus three defense, plus three range attack. What's interesting, as it says up here, is if one of them is knocked down, you still get to play. And they've got this nice joint deck of cards. We'll take a look at all of them in a second. That lets them actually do some things together, even if they're split up. So there you have it. We've taken a look at all of the heroes that are in God of War, the card game. Now each of them has a standee, which is basically the same image that you have on their character sheet. So here's Kratos. Here we've got Sindri and Brock. We'll take a look at both of them at the same time. We've got Atreus, Freya, and Mimir. Now here we've got the first player token, house tokens and the nominations of 10, 5, and 1. We have the enemy defense die that has 0, 2, 1, and 5 on it. But you notice there's more zeros than anything else, which is good for you and good for all of us players because when enemies fail to block, it's awesome. We have these hand limit denomination uh, tokens. So these pur this purple side is for when you've got uh, extra cards. So you can take as many tokens as extra cards as you have. And this slash card, and you'll notice that it's got the symbol for God of War on the back, means that you've got one less card in your hand. We have stun tokens for enemies, death tokens for enemies that have been defeated, as well as these generic tokens that can be then be used as many different things. In one mission, they're missile toes. In other missions, they're quest markers for a fire pyre. Now let's take a look at each player's deck of cards. So you can tell who's is who because they've got their image on it. Now you'll notice you've got the blue defense cards, which can be played defensively. We've got melee attack cards that can only attack certain areas in the scene. Don't worry, we'll go over that. And you'll notice we've got range attack cards. Now with Kratos, some of his can be range attack or we've got that rage track symbol as well to show you that the rage can go up. And sorry, just to clarify what I meant by or, you can either play it as a range attack or a plus one on top of another attack like this melee attack. We also have generic cards that will give you a plus to your attack. So for example, these two cards together, the melee and a plus two would be a range attack of four. If you throw that plus three in there, it's a range attack, sorry, melee attack of four or melee attack of seven. Now this card's interesting because it can be melee or ranged. Kratos' other special card is a block that deals damage back to the enemy up to the amount that you blocked. So we'll take a look at Freya next. So she's got, like you saw with Kratos, plus two. She does have a purple card and we'll separate those out to talk about them as they play differently. Other than that, you're seeing everything very similar to Kratos' deck. Now she is the healer, so you may discard any plus card to, deal, to heal that much damage to one hero. You can add plus one to an ally's attack or plus two to an ally that's in the same column as you. You can also cancel all damage that any one hero would take, which is pretty cool. Now, Atreus can stun the target, but other than that, you'll notice his cards play very similar to everyone else. He's got this nice range attack where you can subtract two from the enemy die result, but overall, nothing special. Here we've got Brock and Sindri's card. They're special and they can advance one. This one is a plus, but if Brock and Sindri are the same column, it's actually a plus four. Now here's some interesting stuff for them. If they are in different columns, after one attack, you can repeat the same attack, which is pretty cool. Advantage of spreading them out. And you can also do the other thing. They have two of these cards in their deck. They can each heal one damage. Now here we've got Mimir, who I said I haven't played too much with. You notice most of his cards are defensive or special. So you can move him to different carriers. You can add plus one to an ally's attack based on the plus you discard. Now you can move his rage up with this. In the next attack of an ally this round, the end result of the enemy die is added to the ally's attack instead. You can discard a plus to heal Mimir and his carrier. Plus one to an ally's attack and may discard a plus to further increase the attack of that that same amount, so he's got a lot of interesting boosting uh, abilities and healing abilities. So an interesting character, but one we just haven't had a chance to play with. 
Now we've got the quest cards, which will detail to some flavor text and your winning conditions, any special rules for the quests. Then we have the final bosses, which are presented the same way. Now you notice that each of these cards on the back has a hindrance. Don't worry, when we get into the setup, we will talk about hindrances. Well, maybe more in the how to play section. Now, this is the upgrade deck. And as you can see, we've got a whole slew of different upgrade cards, purple cards for special abilities. Some can be healed. We get some pluses that may have some limitations on them. We get new attacks that can be melee or something else. So draw two cards. There's just a whole slew of different things that are available in here, like another draw two cards, advance your rage by two. So as you play the game, you're going to be gaining these upgrade cards and upgrading your decks. Next, we've got these different resources that may be used in certain quests. We've got the Shatter Crystal, which can maybe let you do extra damage or is something you need to obtain. We have the Poison Marker, which when you gain it goes to the top of your deck. And then the moment you draw it, you take a damage and draw a new card. We then also have the Stun Cards, which when immediately you draw it, you have to discard it. So the more Stun Cards that are in your deck, the less effective you are because you're losing a card from your hand. Now, I'm not going to take these out to show you what's in them. You'll see one fully laid out when we go into the how to play. But we do get these different quest packs. So in here are a certain number of cards to lay out the scenario. So you know they're, they're numbered at the top. You've got these little symbols as to how you lay them out. Don't worry, we'll take a look at that in more detail. So we get a total of six of them for the different quests. And then we get a total of another... Oh, I just knocked that over. We get another four for the different final boss options that we have. And there you have it. We've gone over all the components that are available in God of War, the card game. So keep it right here as we're gonna teach you how to set up and then how to play the game. Now we're gonna teach you how to set up God of War, the card game. Now I do have a few things that are off camera. You saw the corner just peeking out here. We've got the sh shatter crystals, the poison, and the stun cards that are within easy reach. We also need to have our health tokens nearby. I just don't want them cluttering up our space. We've got the first player token, which will come into play. A few quest tokens, some death tokens. You get the picture. We'll also need Freya's tokens. Now she's got two of them, but just because I'm trying to keep the clutter down, I'm only going to have one out. Uh, we're only going to be playing two rounds of the game, so I don't know if this is going to come into play but I will show you how to use it anyway. Now, the next thing we need to do, and I'm gonna set a card aside actually, because we're gonna teach you how to play on the Travelers. So this is the one, but you, what you're gonna wanna do is really shuffle up all the quest cards. Actually, I'll mix it in, I'll just take it out afterwards. And then you're gonna deal out three quests to sort of build your, your path. And we end up with the Travelers anyway. So you put out your first quest, you then put out the next two and once you complete this quest you can move on to either of the next ones now what's important to note is when you select one of the quests the next quest is flipped over and you will suffer that hindrance during the quest that you so choose to undertake now the next thing you would do is the same thing with the final bosses then you would deal out the three cards, ideally making a nice pyramid. And let's say you decided you want to fight Sigrun. You'd flip over the other two and you would suffer these hindrances during your fight with the final boss. The one from earlier would not necessarily carry over. You only suffer these ones here, this one here. Now, for the sake of keeping things clean, we're going to get rid of this path as it's not going to be important for the how to play, but it is important for your setup of the game. Next, what we're going to do is set up the scene. Now to do that, you would unpackage one of these. So we did the one that is number one for the travelers and we set out the scene as so. You've got these little symbols that will tell you where everything fits within the scene. Now all the scenes are four cards wide at least. Some of them have a bottom, some of them don't.
Oh, nope. This one goes here. This one is here. Nope, oh, he's here. And this one is here. So you can tell when everything's in place because you've got a nice looking scene. Now, we're also going to need our upgrade cards. And we're going to try to see if there's a way to fit them on camera. Not really. They don't fit very well. But you know what? I'll see what I can do as we've basically completed the setup here. I'm just going to move everything over and see if we can get that stack. So as you can see, one of the reasons why I'm taking the time to do this is uh, showcasing that the game, well, a compact card game still is a little bit of a table hog. So there we go. We're able to get our upgrade stack out and near the scene. We've got our die. Kratos, since it's his game, we'll put the axe on the top of his head here. Actually, if I slide him down just a little bit, we can make some room for that token. So we can see that Kratos will be going first. Now, we're going to get into the how to play. So before we do that, we're going to make a quick cut. And then we'll be back with our how to play for God of War, the card game. So how do you play God of War, the card game? Well, we are taking on scenario one, the Travelers, whose winning condition is that we have to defeat both of these Travelers in order to win. Now, you notice he's got infinite health. We've got this guy that's fighting us, these two fire demons in the back, and this other big Traveler who's got a total of 25 armor. Now, there are some instructions on the cards, so you notice that when runestones are revealed, we will flip this scene. Once we destroy his armor, we will flip this scene. If we happen to kill this enemy right here, we will flip this scene. He has infinite health, but when he, after he attacks, we will flip this scene. Now, we've got enemies up here who will also be flipped once they've been defeated. We can also spend two range icons to flip this scene right here. Now, before we can do anything, I'm just going to remove this as it's not key to what we're doing. We need to get our heroes into different columns. Now, they can be in the same column, one in the front, one in the back. You can never have more than two heroes in a column, meaning we had a third. Nope. Doesn't work. And typically in a two-player game, though, you're going to want to spread out. We need to reveal these rune stones. Taking out the travelers is not necessarily going to be the best thing to do. So we have to go through our preparation phase. In case Kratos is going to go over here. Freya will start over here. And let's see what we get for cards. So let's shuffle up our decks. We'll go through our preparation phase and we'll draw our seven card hand. So for Kratos, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have a whole whack of defense and some range. Not a bad start, actually. So I'm going to put this down off camera. We'll draw Freya's seven cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you know what? I did not shuffle our cards. We got everything I was showing you during the unbox, not unboxing the components. We'll draw the seven cards. All right, so we've got her card. She's got primarily melee attacks, some defense. So let's see what we're gonna do. Now we'll reference just the rule book quickly here. So we did the preparation phase. We dropped to our hand limit. Now the heroes may in any order move, play action cards, use a rage ability, or interact with the listed things to perform their requirements. So we will start with player one, Kratos. Now we can't, we do not have to range things to do. So we'll start by playing and just to keep it visible, I'll play them out right here. We're gonna do a melee attack. 
plus four. Melee attack plus five against this enemy that's in front of us. We will then roll our die. He defends for two, unfortunately, meaning we've only done three damage to this enemy. Now these will go into our discard pile. And I put Kratos' card on top of Freya for the moment. Well, now we're actually gonna make a range attack, but our range attack is gonna be targeting this melee character. Range attacks can target either up front or in the back. And as we haven't defeated an enemy, we wanna defeat an enemy. So he only blocks one, which is good. Meaning the enemy is defeated. He's taken the four damage. Now, in some scenarios, you may place a death marker to symbolize that they will no longer activate. In this case, we are instructed to flip his card. What this does is we advance our rage by one. Now, Kratos made two attacks, one ranged, one melee. We also advance our range not range, our rage by two. Now this will reflip at a certain point, but it's not happening right now. Now Kratos also has the option of moving and staying here is not necessarily a good idea because we've got one, two, three symbols that will essentially hit us. So we want to at least get away from one of them. So we're going to move to this location. Now the next thing we do is we flip over the top card from the upgrade deck. We take a look and see what symbol is on it at the corner. We then activate the cards that match that symbol. Now I just slid that down because we got a little bit of glare here, meaning this flips over. So he will be back in play. And we've got this character that attacks and will then be flip over the card. So he's gonna deal three damage We'll flip over his scene first. We're now able to damage him. So he attacks, and you can see by the symbol here, so he would attack these three spaces. Now, only the characters up front would take damage. So Freya's being defended, just for an example. He had an attack, and we'll just take a quick peek again. He's attacking these two spaces for three damage. Now, Kratos can play a defensive card. So we'll play our plus two defense to limit that damage to just one. Next, it is Freya's turn. So taking a look at what we have, and unfortunately, she does not have a lot of great cards and abilities right now. For example, the plus one to an ally's attack or plus two to the same ally, sorry, to an ally on the same column as you doesn't really work because Kratos is already activated. And we've just got these melee attacks. So at this point, she's gonna move and she will attack the Traveler. So she's got a plus one. We're going to spend this as a plus one. We'll drop everything else into the attack as well. Her two plus threes for a total of an attack of eight. Roll the dice, he gets a zero. So we deal eight damage to his first ranking of armor. These cards will all be placed in Freya's discard pile. We will then reveal the next card, which is the Y, or I'm not sure what the rune is. It's a good card though, all players draw a card. So he activates attacking these three spaces, meaning he will attack Freya. Freya will block for one. Unfortunately, this healing card isn't very useful right now. It will take two damage. So we've now gone through, as you can see, the activation phase for each hero, all the way through to the scene activation. Remember these actions can be performed in any order that you want. We now get the extra scene activation. So we have to reveal another card, which is once again the Y. So that is annoying, meaning she will take 
three damage, bringing her to a total of five. So she already took a beating quite heavily right there. We now then get to go through the upgrade phase where we discard any of our remaining cards. Each player will take one upgrade card or remove the card from our discard pile. We place a new card on the top of our deck. So we've got two really good cards here. So at this point, we're gonna go like this. Now, the sequence will restart. So we are gonna go to Freya, as she is now. And just realizing here, and I apologize, the, uh, the ax, which was, Got a little cut off. I thought I had a little more room, so apologize. We'll just put it up over there for Freya. So we'll draw our seven cards. So we've got her hand. Draw Kratos's. So as you'll notice, we always draw that upgrade card that we selected. And at the end of the upgrade phase, we neglected to do it. The unused card goes at the bottom of the deck. Now, the reason why that's important is it's usually not gonna necessarily come up again, as you're gonna go through three quests, two regular ones, one final boss, in order to beat the game. So it is now Freya's turn. And this time we've got all of our ranged Icons. So we'll start with the first thing. All players draw a card. So we got Kratos as well. And while she can make some big attacks, and probably what I would actually do would be make some big attacks. I'm moving here just because I want to show you some different things. We're going to spend both of these tokens, well, symbols, to interact with the water wheel. We flip the two cards, and oh, we have revealed our first rune stone. So that's how we're gonna progress because we need to flip this by revealing three rune stones. And unfortunately, that's really all she can do this turn. So we will reveal the next card, which means both of these characters trigger. And I might have missed him at the start. Yeah, I didn't trigger him properly at the start, that earlier game. I think I only had one guy attack. In any case, it'll let me teach you range attack. So I will make a notation of that when we get to the how to play. Now, this is gonna be a tough situation for Freya because she's getting attacked by the melee character, as is Kratos, and the range symbol means you attack the character the farthest away. So right now it's Freya. If she was over here, it'd be Freya. So if you take a look at these characters at the top here, this fire guy would target Kratos, this one would target Freya, and even in this case, it would now be still Freya and Kratos. If this is the case, while well, the guy up front is technically blocking, she would not take any damage. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cancel all damage from one of the attacks, and then we're gonna play her plus two shield to block the other attack. Now, unfortunately, all these plus cards are gonna be wasted this turn. We now go to Kratos' turn, and we need to progress with doing some more stuff. And we gotta play his defense first, so we're getting attacked by this guy right here from the symbol. So we're actually gonna block, he's doing two damage. I'd like to reflect more, but we're just gonna play this to block a damage and bounce a damage back at him. Taking one damage ourselves. So we want to take out that guy that's up there. So we've got a range attack, plus one, plus three. 
And we'll spin this as a plus two. Now I'm keeping these other cards for a specific reason. We're also gonna play this to return one discarded card to our hand. I want that plus three back. So we've got our range plus one, plus three. So that's a total of four. A six range attack that we're making against this fire guy up here. Roll the die. Completely creamed him. So we've now defeated him and I automatically get the heal three damage. So that's pretty cool. I have yet to move and I can do some other attacks. Got to move up my range. So we're actually going to try to smash through this guy's first layer of armor. We shall move here. Oh, and I did neglect to do this. We got the two symbols here. So in actuality, this guy was in that position. So this is one of the things we're going to talk about in the uh, review. It's a lot of little icon glow. Uh, bloat I find and don't necessarily enjoy it, but you can see what you can do, but it's very easy to miss certain things. So we're going to make an attack plus two plus three. So a five attack against his armor. He rolled a five blocks everything, but our rage is now up. So we can spend the rage ability to an extra plus three to this melee attack. So this becomes regular attack, plus three, plus one, for four. I'm gonna do another three damage. So let's just take out the five. Take back one, put out the 10. So we've almost smashed through that first layer of damage. We've got two of the rune stones revealed. We'll finish up this full turn fully. We trigger. His attack, so he's gonna hit Kratos and Freya. Unfortunately, Freya has no defense left. She takes three damage and is knocked down. She's now removed from the fight. We do get an extra scene activation. And as this guy activated twice, Kratos happened to take six damage. So the heroes are not in a good shape right now. I don't, the strategy of staying right here really wasn't the best. We're getting hit from all sides, but it did let me show you the different things that we are able to do. Now, one thing that's important to note is that if, and this is a good example, we still get to go through the upgrade phase. She's just out of the game. It's not clear in the rules does not say if you have to be standing, it says each player. So in this case, we're just going to pick some specific cards. Let's go back to the bottom of the deck. Now, for example, if I'm playing Kratos by myself, I'm still going to have to draw three scene activation cards because we still do the scene activation during the player's turn. So we need to keep that in mind. That's one of the reasons why you really do not want to be knocked down. Now, any player that is knocked down will come back once the quest has been resolved. Now, how would we resolve the quest? Well, we would have needed to smash through the armor of this traveler. We're gonna flip him over and then do another 15 damage. Now, once we'd revealed all the rune stones, this player would not be able to flip back over. And you notice we'd get a, a bonus. So we need these two bonus tokens, symbolize that we can now drop to nine cards, which makes a giant difference. So getting a little bit of spoilers, this is a how to play. But basically find the rune stones, get the extra cards, beat up the travelers, and you'll be on your way to a good win. Now you'll notice in this first mission, we did not use the Shatter Crystals, the Poison, or the Stuns. They do not come up in every game. Same thing for the Quest Crystals, well, Quest Tokens, or 
whatever they decide to be during uh, that game, or to death tokens. They would only come up when you do not have this symbol on the card. So there you have it. That is how you play God of War the card game. Now I did make one or two minor mistakes and I'm actually sort of, not sort of, I'm happy I made them because it directly relates to what we're gonna talk about in the review, but I did catch everything. So keep it right here as Julie and I will be coming back at you with our review for the game. So God of War the card game. What did you think of the game? Well, I was I was um, a little afraid based on the name <laughs> of this of this game, but you said that it was cooperative. Well, you thought it was going to be war, and I was going to be like war. Yeah, I thought you might be using this excuse to beat on me. I don't know. I don't beat on you. I know you don't. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, it. Um, let me just go right out and say the the art is a little bloody. A little bit not as happy place as I like to go. Well, straight off, the one thing I'll say, I give the art for this game a zero. It gets a flat out zero. Why? It is stills from the video game. So, is that cool? Kind of, sort of, not really. It's from actual gameplay of the game. Uh, I mean, I think the characters are just from some of the cutscenes. So, well, they look good and it works well for the, I'd say, your player characters. The scenes are just kind of meh and a little bit polygonal because it's a video game. I would have much rather seen them do something with some actual art, but that would have raised the cost of the game, I guess. Yeah, the other thing that, um, well, the, so the thing that interested me before I go into more negatives, I just was looking at the art on the box and remembering the fact that I didn't love it. Uh, I did like the fact that it's cards and that it's kind of a deck builder because you kind of get to upgrade mm -hmm. uh, your deck, which I thought was was pretty cool. Um, so so that was fun. And there is a, a female character that I got to play, <laughs> a single female character. So that was that was fun. Well, it's, it's a father and son story, and I'm not so sure what Brock and Sindri are because they're quite clearly not human. So are they male? Are they female? They kind of look male, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, she had some, some cool things and, uh, you know, this, the son has other, you know, cool attributes as well. I let you play, uh, the God of War since, you know, that's just yeah. your thing. Well, I played the video games. I played as Kratos. I was playing Kratos. Like it's just, just the way it was going to be. But the one thing I will say is, like, I know I gave the art a zero, but uh, talk about, I think we're going to go back and forth with what we like and what we dislike. It's not going to really be concise because if you did happen to watch our full How to Play, you may notice I did make some one or two mistakes in the game and during the How to Play, it's just like a simple thing that I miss and that really speaks to some of the issues we have with the game. Oh, and you're going to talk about the rule book, aren't no, you? No, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about the rule book. But what I was going to say, what I do like a lot is the asymmetrical nature that all the characters play very differently. Mm -hmm. We didn't get to try uh, Mimir. We just didn't play... Uh, well, I wasn't really interested in the character, but looking at him, he's fairly interesting. But no one plays alike, and that, I think, is a real strength of the game. It was fun to play Brock and Sindri. They have their strengths and their weaknesses, and that's the same with every character. So I really got to give hats off to the designers in uh, that aspect. And it also means you're going to want to build your decks a little differently depending on who you're playing. And that slight deck building aspect I really like as well. Yeah, no, I thought that was I thought that was fun. Um, I mean, you, you do get a little bit of luck of the draw, but at least you're not playing with a huge deck of cards like we've had issues with, you know, Harry Potter comes to mind. Yes, where we've got cards stacked when it's sleeve that's like that high. And it's like, we need the, those specific cards yeah, that are... I think you're exaggerating there. just a little bit, but in any case... Okay, sorry, it's like that high. This, this was fun. Um, I did enjoy it. Uh, there was some confusion with the symbols. Um, you know, I think that wasn't very clear. No, but, but that actually came across during the how to play where I definitely in one of the turns missed one of the symbols. I did go back and I caught all of them, but there is too much iconography bloat. And I think we can both agree on that is that there's just little colored icons everywhere. And the problem is it's like, the hearts are green, you've got a green symbol, you've got a blue symbol, you've got like, and well, it's cool, it's like video game-esque, 
it's not, it doesn't catch your eye. It's not like you're playing a game where something might be flashing in your face, something that will draw your attention to it, that it's easy when you're maybe like flipping over a card, you're like, oh yeah, that guy activates. But out of the three symbols on this card, you kind of missed one because you just looked and saw like one of the other ones. So that's definitely a huge critique on the game and I really don't like it, honestly. Uh, it didn't really affect the gameplay negatively. We often were able to catch the mistakes and just correct it, but it's a pain in the butt. I really wish they'd found sort of a better way to activate the enemy cards. I like the fact that it is randomized with the deck, but I, I almost think that you could replicate that effect with just an extra die. And it's like, roll a die, activate this card, roll it, and just set up something like that. It does get a little tricky because not all the stages are the same number of cards, but you could just, you know, maybe have a die roll, you know, one, two, three. But then you wouldn't get the upgrade with the cards that come up. No, I still think they should do the upgrade, but I think you should draw a card and roll a die. I think having a die instead of a bunch of different icons would be just a little easier to say, like, you know, activate on rolls one through three instead of having three big colored icons that resemble other colored icons, which could be the fact that this is a tracking token, that it's a health, that this is a symbol for the boss. It's just all over the place and something I really didn't like. Yeah, so I mean, the the other thing that I would say um, with this is that we played it two players and then we played it four players. And we played it four players because we thought, this is pretty easy. You know, we didn't really have much of a challenge. So we thought maybe it's harder at four players because that's happened before. Well, it, it definitely is luck of the draw because you did not, you weren't down here when I was filming the how to play. I did actually die during the how to play. But the way it worked out was just, I was. Focusing on because he wasn't playing with me. Maybe, maybe. But I was focusing on teaching the game, didn't take my positioning into account, and just got a lot of damage stacked and some bad draws. But you took for granted that we played it how many times? Two players, and the only the only time we ever died was on the final boss when we were playing four no, and we weren't playing together. It was the also the luck of the draw and that happened because Freya's healing card came out in the first hand. If it came on the second hand, it wouldn't have been a problem. She would have been healed by like three or four and would have been able to go through to the next round. But I also didn't play the scenario where we're talking about how easy it is if you focus on the objectives, which I did not do in the how to play. And so if you skip the head, the first scenario, you're trying to reveal rune stones. Revealing those rune stones makes the scenario basically a walk in the park. I did not do that and that's why I died. Well, if you don't follow the objective of the game, that might happen. Yes, <laughs> so that's what I was agreeing with you. So if you're playing the game strategically and you're trying to win the game and following the objective, it is fairly easy, I would say. Yeah, I don't think we've ever really found any challenge in this. Actually, the, the one time that we did die together was because of the loss conditions. We just weren't paying enough attention to it. We focused on the boss, but we didn't realize that with the amount of people we had, the triggers were just happening so often that we fell behind and we just couldn't catch back up. Then when we replayed the scenario, we were supposed to restart the game, but that's actually another little complaint. You lose a quest, gotta restart the whole game. It's not so bad if you're just going to stop, but we were playing it for review purposes, so a little short on time. Luckily we lost after only like three rounds, so we just pulled out our upgrade cards and reset the game. So it'd be cool to have just sort of reset rules, almost like a game save feature from a video game, but that's not in the game. You don't really need it because it's a 90 minute game, but losing in scenario two before you get to the final boss or quest two is just kind of annoying. I don't think I have anything else to add. I mean, it's a fairly simple game. Uh, actually, one of the things I, I disliked but you you pointed out to me that it also has an impact on the cost of the game is I I don't like when we play with standees. I'm used to minis now and I'm spoiled by minis, I guess. I would have liked to have minis instead of standees. Yeah, no, it'd be nice to have some miniatures, especially, it'd be nice upgrade, but I don't, especially because it's a Simon game, so they do fantastic miniatures, but this would definitely put the game into another price bracket and they're really going for that sort of $25, $30 US bracket. And it's definitely worth 
the price of the game. Now, my last gripe with this game, it has to do with the rule book. Well, it's primarily laid out well. You get everything that you need in it to learn how to play the game. That being said, take the game out, set it up, lots of iconography, a lot easier to read the rules when you've got the game out in front of you. But when it comes to the scenarios, you're trying to figure out these win and loss conditions, what you're trying to do, and it's really just not necessarily clear. It's like, I one point it's saying like trap Balder for when you're trying to beat Balder. We figured out what we needed to do. It wasn't that difficult, but still when we're looking at the cards, going through the setup, it just wasn't as uh, intuitive as I would like it to be. And I think that having a section in the rule book that just sort of explained the scenarios, instead of having it on these teeny little cards with like one line would have gone a long way to making it a little bit more accessible. But it's funny because we've talked a lot about the negatives. The game was still very fun to play. It's a game that we, uh, that I say we both enjoy. It's a game that's probably not gonna find its way out of the collection just because of how accessible it is. But I don't think this is a game that's gonna hit the table on a regular basis. Probably not. No. So that being said, Julie, what is your score for God of War, the card game? Well, I hesitated back and forth and I'm, we, uh... I honestly, I would say it's a six and a half. Um, and I have rated games that I really didn't like as much as this, a six and a half, but it had a, it's, I don't know, it's a six and a half. I just can't give it a seven. No, and I've, I gotta agree with you. I debated between a six and a six and a half, and it's, I've rated games that I've disliked in certain aspects higher than this game, because even if it wasn't a game that I loved, I felt that it did everything that it set out to do well. I think the reason why this, even though we've had a lot of fun with it, it is a six and a six and a half, is that it doesn't do, besides the uh, upgrade mechanic, which I like, I don't think it's bringing anything new and different to the genre. And while it does a good job of simulating that video game experience, it's still not fluid, smooth, and it's a little clunky. And it's one of those things that I, I don't know, just with all the amount of games we've played, I really appreciate fluid, clear design, and I really don't like iconography bloat, and this suffers from it, and that almost drops it down to a six, but that fun factor brings it to a 6.5. If you're a God of War fan, and you're trying to introduce non-video gamers to the franchise, and they like playing board games and card games, well, this is probably the kind of game that would fit well in your collection. So on that note, it's time to like, comment, sub hit, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when we have some new content for you. you okay then? Yeah, apparently. Getting a little ahead of yourself? I say it too often. It just <laughs> wanted to come out all at once. <laughs> and take a look down below in the video description for links to all of our social media feeds. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can find pictures of us playing God of War the card game so you can see what the game looks like. You can also get some hints as to what's upcoming on the channel and popping up in front of us are gonna be links to some related content. So we'll probably have a link back to another licensed game, as well as a link to our most recently released video. What, with that being said, Julie, what time is it? It's time to grab our drinks. Grab our best friend. Gotta keep playing games. Gonna keep playing games. We'll definitely get this back to the table. We've played most of the quests. I'd like to at least beat everything. But like it. you said, it's strange. After a six and a half rating, it's one of those games that we still both agree will stay in the collection, even, even if it is a six and a half. Well, the, we've had a few of them like that. There's been games that we rated higher that we really like their ingenuity that are now no longer in the collection. For example, Fog of Love. Great design. Gotta love roleplay. Started to fall a little flat after a few plays, but well-designed game. Whereas this one, it's a fun design but could use some smoothing out. No, maybe if I polish it, I can round out these edges here. Oh, uh, okay there. Like, like you want his head? Is that it? You want Kratos' head? Well, then maybe I'll get his beard too. <laughs> How would you like that? <laughs> no.